Hello, it's another weekend. Welcome to Week in Review on Trust Television, where we take a look at some of the biggest stories in the past one week. In case you missed it, this is another opportunity for you to catch up. My name is Martia Umar. We'll start with this story about the significance of Easter celebration, not to forget. Uh, last weekend was all about Easter. And the significance of the celebration of Easter Monday lies in the fact that it is the day Jesus emerged from the tomb. And after the regular church service that are characterized by reflections on the essence and lessons of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ on Easter Sunday, some Christians use Easter Monday to show love and relax in the newness of Christ's resurrection. In Abuja, some residents of the Federal Capital Territory took, to the, took the celebration rather to one of the city's public recreational centers, specifically the Millennium Park, where they were sadly denied access and made to pay to access the facility while others were forced to make use of alternatives. Take a look. Easter Monday declared a public holiday by the government denotes the victory of life of Christ over death. A day that has been set aside by most people to celebrate whereby they visit recreational centers, parks within the city center. And this way they, show their, they, they express love, show love to one another. We're here at the Millennium Park, a place that is supposedly free. But the situation right now is that the officials on ground are asking people for money because they said the government part of the park is closed, is shut down, and that of the private part is where people are asked to pay money. Meanwhile, the information online, according to some uh, people who are here to access this facility, has it that the place is free and it's available for usage. As you can see behind me, people are here turning back their vehicles because they can't have access into the park. And then over, over the other side, we have people who have now decided to make use of the Unity Fountain as an alternative, just so they can still have their celebration. Okay, so I'm here at the Unity Fountain today to have fun, of course, because today is Easter Monday, and also to spend time with my family too. Today is a public holiday, a free day, and um, most people will like to have uh, a time out together with their family, and um, it's most time people go to work, they don't have time, and once there is a holiday like this, they have a free time with their family and things they have to enjoy the moment. It's a day that we celebrate um, the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we decided to come here to enjoy ourselves at Millennium Park. But all the best. They disappointed us, but no problem, we are here. The frustrations and disappointments in the faces and minds of these people have not in any way deterred their spirit, the spirit of love of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Although the Millennial Park, parts of the Millennial Park is under lock and key, the Unity Fountain has served as an alternative. Aisha Salihu, Trust TV News, Abuja. And on a very sad note, seven people were killed in an explosion which occurred at Iwere Town in Adokola local government area of Taraba State. And reports say a bomb went off at a local restaurant crowded by many people. And more than 20 people, including women, sustained injuries in the incident. And they were reportedly taken to the Federal Medical Center. Jalingo, spokesman of Taraba Police Command DSP Usman Abdullahi, confirmed the incident but said three persons died while 19 sustained injuries. He said that the injured were taken to the Federal Medical Center in Jalingo for treatment. And there was panic at Ongwambulis in Chikwon local government area of Kaduna State as bandits killed three of the 26 villages adopted of March 21, 2022. After abducting them, the bandits had demanded 20 million naira ransom for each of the captives. The bandits executed three of the victims on Monday night, threatening to kill more by 12 noon on Tuesday if the demands had not been met. And the chief of Ngwambulus, Gideon Haruna Goni, who confirmed the killing of the three victims, said that the bandits called the community to inform that they should pick 
uh, corpses around Dutse community along the Kaduna Abuja Highway. And the chief said that the corpses had been retrieved, adding that the bandit said if the family failed to pay 20 million naira each for all the captives before 12 p.m. on Tuesday, April 19th, the remaining victims will be killed. And uh, moving on, the mother of the missing social media critic Abu Bakr Idris, popularly known as Didiat, is dead as she died with the hope of reuniting with her son. According to family source, uh, that was what the mom said, but it happened that it didn't come true. But let's take a look at this report. The mother of the popular social media critic Abu Bakr Idris, popularly known as the Diata, who mysteriously disappeared in the early hours of August 2, 2019, has died at the age of 66. Dadiata, who could have been 37 years this year, was allegedly taken from his Bernawa home in Kaduna in 2019. According to Usman Idris, a son to the deceased and younger brother to the social media critic, said their mother, Hajia Fatima, has been devastated over the abduction of her son, Dadiata, almost three years ago which is also a contributing factor to her falling health that led to her death. Actually, words, we are short of words to express the condition she found herself. But initially, right from the word go, when the incidents happened, we tried as much as possible to calm her down, knowing fully that she is having the problem of you know, high blood pressure. So since that time, we tried to show her that if she allow the condition or the situation of things, to you know overtake her what will happen is that we'll have double calamity and with the help of god she has maintained her stability up till the time she gave the ghost he said to her last breath she fought begged and sought for answers from concerned authorities on the whereabout of her son our hope is every day we are still, we are still opti optimistic that Abu Bakr will come. My call to the authority, the, to the authorities. In fact, we we have made numerous calls, but it's like our calls are, are you know, falling on deaf ears. But we will continue to call. They are the ones that Allah entrusts our safety on, and they are adamant. At the adamant attitude that they have been showing is not helping matters. Abu Bakr Idris Dadiata was the first social media critic commanding large followership with huge ambition. He is dearly missed by his wife and two young daughters who can barely remember him but kept asking the question, when is Abba coming home? Fatima Sala Laden, Trust TV News, Kaduna. And the whereabouts of Dadiata will still be in the mouth of a lot of Nigerians, and not just the family members alone. But in another development, the Nigerian Air Force NAF has confirmed the death of two persons in a crash involving one of its trainer aircraft in Kaduna State. And NAF Director of Public Relations and Information Air Commodore Edward Gabwet in a statement on Wednesday identified the officers as Flight Lieutenant Abu Bakr al Khali and Flight Lieutenant Elijah Karatu. Fatima Laden has an update. Take a look. The unfortunate trainer aircraft incident claimed the lives of two pilots, Flight Lieutenant Abu Bakr Ibrahim Al Ali and Flight Lieutenant Elijah Haruna Karatu. The Chief of Air Staff Air Marshal Oludayo Amao says the Nigerian Air Force will ensure that it thoroughly investigate the cause of the Super Meshach trainer crash. And according to him also, an accident investigation board have been constituted upon receiving the sad news. Airmen and airwomen of the 401 Flying Training School have also been assured of measures to avert similar occurrence in the future. Available record shows that 11 months ago, Chief of Army Staff Ibrahim Atahiru and 10 other senior military officers died in a NAVS Beechcraft 350, which crashed around the Kaduna International Airport. Statistics also shows that 
between August 29, 2015 to 2021, Nigeria suffered 11 military plane crashes with no fewer than 33 military officers perishing. These include the Air Force plane crash, which killed about seven people on board here in Kaduna. And that's quite unfortunate. As we move to Kano, where Kano State Transport workers operating in Kano Line, Motor Park are appealing to the state government to consider its decision to shut down the motor park as it may render over 10,000 people jobless. Trust TV's Idris Chibrin reports that the state government has already shifted the transporters to a nearby building pending the final closure of the park. Situated along Zaria Road in Kano Metropolis, Kano Line Motor Park is the most popular and perhaps one of the largest motor parks in Kano. There are well over 10,000 people benefiting from this park who are now at the risk of losing their jobs. Some of them need to go. There are over 5,000 of us working here at interval. Before now, we were criminals living in Ireland. But when Konkoso established this park, we were relocated here, making a living. Now, if they close this park, do they want us to go back to the life of crime again? According to these people, the state government is yet to provide them with any other alternative as to where they should relocate to, apart from these nearby buildings, which forces many vehicles to park and load passengers from outside the main park. Actually, Ganduji need to look at these people to temper justice with mercy, because he knew that this park was given to us by his political brother, Rabi Konkosu. Like me, I have been working here from my childhood. In fact, if it's a government work, I will be due for retirement in a few years to come. For God's sake, if you send me away from here, where will I go? Meanwhile, the Kano State Transport Authority confirmed that the park is being relocated to another location and that the intention is not to render any person jobless, but to ensure that there is control in the number of motor parks across Kano State. There is no responsible government that would like to render its citizens uh, uh, jobless. Any place that you see government is about to embark on a program, there must be uh, uh, measures that have taken prior to the uh, taking of that uh, uh, activism. So definitely there is a place that government have coughed out out of that place for them to relocate. For now, these transport operators have already been shifted from the main Kano Line motor park to a nearby building on a temporal basis before the final shutdown of the park. Idris Jubrin, Trust TV News, Kano. And you're watching Week in Review. More stories after the break. Do stay with us. Plastic waste is a major environmental challenge in Nigeria. This has been the problem for most environmentalists and not only in Nigeria but all over the world. Uh, Nigeria has recorded about 5,000 incidents of oil spill. All these incidents, were they discovered by your agency? We detect some. The host communities detect quite a lot. The oil companies themselves, through their surveillance uh, agents, discover some because we have to put a lot of efforts on our part to make sure that we synchronize activities with that of the oil companies, working towards preventing the speed. Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you're watching Week in Review on Trust Television. Thank you for joining. And now to political martyrs. Minister of Labor and Employment, Senator Chris Ngige, has officially declared his intention to run from the 
position of president on the platform of the All Progressives Congress, APC. And he said APC did not fail, as many would like to say. Ngigo, while addressing his supporters in his hometown at Alo in Indemili North, a number of states on Tuesday, also said President Muhammad Bahari had not failed. According to him, the president worked with the resources available to him. Ngigo said that if given the opportunity to lead, he would be president everybody would be proud of. It is because of capacity that that is going to go for an exam. One person will score first. We are going to vie for the post of President of the Federal Republic of We cannot be afraid. We cannot be intimidated. We are going there. Osamu. Yes, Memuya. Yes, Memuya. The same power is not Sam Alakat. Power is not given. We have security situation in our hands, not only in the northern part of Nigeria, but in the southern part of Nigeria. See, it's here. Like I say, security, I won't stop the public, but I know what to do if I'm the president. And is among the people um, uh, in the APC that has declared uh, to be president in 2023. And still talking about declaration, former governor of Kano State, Senator Rabio Konkwacho, has formally declared for the 2023 presidency. And speaking at the national headquarters of the NNPP while collecting the forms, Konkwacho said his party will take over power in 2023 is that the NMPP is a progressive party that wants to change the political landscape of Nigeria. Kwankwaso, former Minister of Defense, urged Nigerians, especially politicians, who truly want to change the country for good to join NNPP. <laughs> So we are the people who have decided to come together and make sure that we have one Nigeria, no matter which religion we practice. Even those who have religion at all, we don't care in this part, whether you are from the north or from the south, or Christian, or you can be Muslim, or even part of Hausa, or people who believe we are all Nigerians. And if the country goes back, it is for all of us. And still on some of the political events that occurred in the past one week, the National Executive Council of the All Progressives Congress, APC, says it will not choose its flag bearer at next general election through consensus. And the ruling party at its post-convention neck meeting in Abuja scheduled its presidential primary for the 30th of June. And the meeting, which has in attendance a President Mahmoud Bari, also fixed price tax for nomination forms. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman has this report. It is the first National Executive Council meeting of Nigeria's ruling party just emerging from a delicate national convention. The party is racing to meet electoral timelines ahead of a crucial national election next year. Two critical decisions are on the front banner, determining the mode of its presidential primary and determining where the plant bearer should emerge from. Now, our special convention for presidential primaries is being to hold between Monday 30th of May to Wednesday 1st of June 2022. The party settles for indirect primary as against the much talked about consensus option. As for the issue of zoning of the presidential ticket, it remains obscure. Aspirants awaiting the commencement of the sales of the party's nomination forms now know what size of war chairs they need. Those aspiring for the presidency, they have to cough out 100 million naira for expression of interest and nomination forms, while governorship aspirants will dole out 50 million naira. Our presidential form has been set for expression of interest at 30 
million naira. And the nomination form set at 70 million naira, bringing it to a total of 100 million naira. Sale of forms commences on Saturday. Meanwhile, NEC agrees to transfer its powers to the NWC apparently to pass track activities amid a tight electoral shadow. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. And meanwhile, a group of protesters carrying placards with various inscriptions laid on the Secretariat of the All Progressive Congress on Wednesday last week, demanding the resignation of political appointees aspiring for elective offices. The group is worried that the seat tight attitudes of such political appointees may jeopardize the interests of the party. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman again filed in this report. As pressure continues to mount on political appointees uh, at the federal and the state levels, aligned with Section 84, Subsection 4 of the new Electoral Act 2022, uh, a group, uh, as you can see behind me, uh, took their campaign to the National Secretariat of the APC here in Wuse 2 uh, to press uh, home their demand for political appointees, uh, especially uh, of President Muhammad Buhari, to resign their appointments uh, and face politics uh, in line with this uh, new legislation. We are here today because this is a party issue, the APC, the ruling party. And we think that the laws made by the government, except you are announcing that you are bigger than the government, if the electoral has says that Whoever that is any political appointee that is vying for any elected post should resign. And this person that we can see from the people, why are they still holding tight in their offices? And but, this is our demand that they are pleased. But, but are they resisting to resign? Some of them are, are very much aware of the provisions of the Electoral Act. Uh, isn't this also, uh, you know, some will say the, you are more like uh, putting the card before the horse? Yes. See, you know, Nigerians, as a party, if this message is not sent before, nobody, nobody knows what will happen. So we now have to be in the front so that the what happened in Zambara State and other parts of the country do not affect this political party. Because time is very relevant in laws. If you miscalculate on time, at the end the subsequence will be the warming will be great. That's why it has to be done right now before time goes out of hand. Okay. The group is very much concerned about, you know, the need to adhere strictly to the laws uh, so that the party would not be at the age and um, all of the precedences or the actions taken by the uh, aspirants or those are in, you know, various political positions uh, would not go in vain. Uh, this is in line with the Section 84, Subsection 4 of the Electoral Act uh, 2022. Now it remains to be seen if these gladiators, who some of them have already thrown their hat in the ring, uh, would adhere to this call and resign their positions and, and, and face, you know, squarely uh, the political activities as we head towards 2023 elections. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. And away from political matters, now to the education sector. For weeks now, most university students in Nigeria have been home due to strike action by the Academy Staff Union of Universities, ASU. The federal government and the association staff uh, of, and the association have been urged to find a lasting solution to the ongoing strike, which is bedeviling the standard of education in the country. The vice chancellor of Nasara State University, Professor Suleiman Bella, made the call in an interview with Trust Television. Take a look. Speaking on behalf of the Vice Chancellor of the University, the Deputy Vice Chancellor, Professor Aruna Ayuba, further explained that the strike has not just affected the students, but also the lecturers. He commended the move being made by various stakeholders in ensuring that the ongoing strike is called off, adding that it will help students graduate at the stipulated time. The leadership of ASU, they've um, continued to say there are issues um, that the federal government needs to address, the issue of funding, the issue of um, welfare of um, university staff, the issue of revitalization of the university, uh, and, and these are some of the issues. So uh, I'm not holding brief for us, but you know, they've continued to say that agreement uh, was reached, and these agreements have been breached over the years. 
And so they are saying, let's go back to that negotiating table to address the issues. The institution's classrooms, library, have all been under lock and key for some time now, making the school environment a ghost of itself. Students residing at the outskirts of the institution while lamenting the negative effect of the strike called on the government to find a lasting solution to the ongoing strike. They say when the two elephants are fighting, the ground suffers. And we, the students at the receiving end, we are actually suffering. Uh, we plead that uh, the government to please listen to ASU because ASU is a body that is actually doing their best to make sure they promote and strengthen the institution of Nigeria so that they can be able to equate it according to UNESCO standard. So we're also pleading to ASU if ASU on their own end should please shift ground because we believe for us to have a unified uh, entity, we want the ASU to shift ground, also government to shift ground. Um, I'm not happy also because it's been two months we've been at home now. So like the strike is supposed to end, they said a month plus. And it's over two months, and we are hearing that they're, supposed, they're going to extend the strike till next month. We are not happy about it now. And my elder sister too is also schooling in this school. She's in her final year, and still the strike is ongoing. She's just at home, going, learning handwork now that she's supposed to be in school, mm. and they're supposed to be graduating this year. Yeah. This is Nasarawa State University, Kefi, where the school used to be beehive of activities, the students in the hostels, at the basketball court. Anywhere you go, it's busy. But now, the school has remained a ghost of itself. And one will attribute this to an agent which says, what's source for the goose? Source for the gander, and which the federal government will curtail the elastic solution to the strike. In Kefi, Kabiru Lewal, Trust TV News. And with that, we've come to the end of this week's edition of Week in Review on Trust Television. For more information and updates, you can follow us on all our social media platforms. I am Martia Umar. Thank you for joining.